The Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, uh, SERAP, has filed a lawsuit against the Independent National Electoral Commission for failing to prosecute those suspected of vote buying and electoral bribery during the recently concluded Ekiti state governorship elections. Serap noted that according to reports, there was a brazen pattern of vote buying and electoral bribery at several polling units during the recently concluded elections, including bargaining prices for votes and payments made in uncompleted buildings. Joining us to discuss this and break it down is the Deputy Director, Serap Uluadari Kolawali. Thank you so much, Mr. Kolawali, for joining us. Thank you very much, Marianne. I'm Great. happy to be here. Thank you. Now, um, I, 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 I ha I've had at least three of the um, running uh, former governorship candidates for equity state uh, elections. I had a couple of them in the studio. Uh, one um, succinctly said here in this studio that he saw vote buying happening right under his nose. Uh, and he could not do anything about it, but that he could see it happening. Um, and then, but one would also wonder why INEC is being sued because INEC's job is to conduct these elections. And um, how does INEC also play the role of a law enforcement in cases like this when they are also saddled with the responsibility of making sure that the elections go as planned? Thank you very much, Mary. I think we need to put that in proper context. In this instance, INEC is the umpire, and the umpire has to do the job in a way that the objectives are met. Uh, elections being a very important part of the democratic process means it must be free and fair, and that must be going in a way that the winner can be reasonably, uh, can come out in, in line with the provisions of the law. And to do that job, the INEC is regulated both by the Constitution and principally by the Electoral Act, that is 2022, the, the amendment in 2022. So in this instance, INEC has that strategic responsibility to ensure that the elections are free and fair. And um, while it plays a role in doing that, that does not take away its role uh, to prosecute those who are found culpable. And that is what makes uh, the Electoral Act 2022 very interesting. It empowers the uh, INEC not only to monitor and do everything uh, in accordance with the Electoral Act to make sure that elections are free and fair, but to also prosecute uh, those who are found culpable. And so the Electoral Act says that uh, INEC can prosecute, with legal officers attached to INEC will be the prosecutors in cases uh, for offenses under the Electoral Act. And I think we can agree, uh, it's beyond doubt that um, uh, this is happening in the state. And the law is very clear. The Electoral Act itself criminalizes uh, vote by Section 121 of the Electoral Act is very clear. While Section 127 is also very clear as to undue influence among other electoral offenses that we saw upon in the So the least they can do is to investigate. And they can always partner with the anti corruption agencies in this regard, or rather, or the law enforcement agencies, including the ICPC and the Nigerian police, to do the investigative part. And then they can do their part and to prosecute. Um, a lot of advocacy had gone towards this, but I think it appears rather unwilling, or call it unwilling, it's more of an unwillingness to uh, those who have, uh, who have uh, participated in various acts of you know, electoral malpractices in the state. We had written to INEC, and when we did not get it, our results, we had to go to court. And the basis of the lawsuit is very simple. We are asking the court to compel INEC to do what the law says they should do, basically, which is to investigate those allegations. These still remain allegations as of today until they are put before a court of competent jurisdiction. And to make sure that INEC um, um, prosecutes those individuals who are found liable across all the political parties and to ensure that they face justice. And the importance of the, what we've seen in electoral action, um, the process in the good mind is so serious that. It is criminalized in the electoral act. So we've seen more movement from ballot snatching to vote by. And that is why INEC must put its foot down, so to speak, to ensure that this is needed in the court, so that we don't carry this over into 2023. And we've seen it happen in Nekiti State, nothing was done. And then it happened again in Austrian State, and nothing has been done so far. So what guarantees that INEC will be able to ensure that this does not repeat itself in 2023? Um, the rather hopeful turnout of elections uh, in, in 2023. Uh, and we are very open that the court will agree with us in this regard. It's hard to see the court deciding otherwise. 
um, as, as, as much as you have explained to us what the process should be, I'm, I'm thinking if INEC is now compelled, if INEC is, is compelled to do what, like you have said, do what they originally are supposed to be, are supposed to do, um, cause this is what the act, uh, the electoral law says, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, um, is INEC now supposed to work with security agencies to what, because Sometimes this vote buying, and I'm not making any case for the vote buyers. I'm just saying sometimes it doesn't happen directly under the watch of INEC. I, I, like you have said, they have a responsibility. But sometimes these vote buyings happen just before the process in itself kick starts. So as Sarah, what do you do in partnering INEC to make sure that this is done the right way? Because again, INEC will tell you they still do not have powers to um, enforce, if these vote buyers are caught, for example, they have to be apprehended by security agents. But if INEC sees that this party or party A or party B, party C, um, and their agents were most involved, um, should that mean that INEC needs to cancel the election? What exactly happens at the end of the day? Uh, I, I, I really don't believe that this can lead to cancellation. That, that is within the purview of INEC anyway. But this is not what this lawsuit or this advocacy is about. It is INEC doing the job that the law empowers them to do. And so the least we could expect INEC to do is to engage the law enforcement agencies. INEC has not come out to say they are engaged in a joint police force or written to them in any way um, to investigate these allegations. There are video clips in the public domain show, um, showing uh, actions of vote buying and on the influence and bribery. So, what has INEC done about that? Have they engaged the police to investigate these uh, allegations and uh, how that turned out? Uh, so investigating these allegations is different from prosecuting the allegations. Investigation will establish whether there's a problem of a she case and then INEC can prosecute that in court. But if INEC is not doing the investigation, naturally, it cannot proceed to the prosecution. And we've not seen INEC come out to say that it is doing anything at all to investigate these allegations. And we are not asking INEC to investigate that case. I never can work with the law enforcement agencies to investigate. Then I may can prosecute. The way criminal prosecution goes in court is to ensure that evidence is to be tendered uh, in favor of the prosecution against those who are brought before the court. But I never is not doing any of this. And if uh, to speak directly to your question, uh, set up is doing its bit. We are doing the work we can do right now. We are having a discussion about it. This is part of the legal advocacy on these kind of issues. And that is beside the letter we're waiting for I to take steps to investigate and to prosecute these offenders. Um, and I believe that the court should be able to do this, to compel INEC to at least start the process of investigation. 2023 looks to, uh, is still some months away. Let the investigation start now. Let the prosecution start. Then we'll talk about whether we we'll get convictions or not. But you would agree with me that INEC taking this step will I'd go a long way in acting as a deterrent for those who might be uh, who might want to do that in 2023, which is the major reason why INEC should do this right now, to mm. ensure that uh, these uh, actions of vote bank, which appears to be going daily, day by day, does not happen, and it does not mar the, the 2023 elections. If you were made to speculate, because we're here to, of course, seek answers to reasons why INEC is yet to um, take action, what, what, what would you think is the reason why INEC is dragging its feet on this particular matter? I'm guessing also on the one hand that INEC is supposed to be as objective as possible to make sure that we have free, fair and credible elections. So I'm not thinking that they're deliberate. But then if you were made to speculate, what would you think is responsible for the foot dragging? It would be interesting to see the defenses they will bring before the court. Uh to defend their inaction in this instance. Uh, but even also, as I had guess, uh, I would say it's, um, it looks like INEC does not have the, the boldness to take this step um, as, as an umpire in the electoral process. INEC should be bold enough to take this step. So this is not about we changing any political party. It is INEC doing what the law has asked them to do. And in this instance, doing this also empowers, uh, empowers INEC to do better or makes the job of INEC easy. Because if INEC takes this, if INEC are taking this step in equity, possibly we're going to see less of this in Oshun. And if INEC does not act about equity and Oshun now, then they would expect more of that to happen in the 2023, 2023 elections, which creates a more of a problem for INEC. So it is actually in the best interest of INEC to do this right now. I really cannot say with specifics why INEC is not taking this step up. Mm. 
Mm. Law has uh, given them a mandate and a duty to do so. And we hope that the court will compel them ultimately uh, to do so. Uh, I always like to make reference to the fact that Serb has so many suits um, against governments, government agencies. Obviously, like you said, these are uh, part of your advocacy to get people to do the right thing. But let's look at the loopholes that may have been created um, by this new electoral law and, and, and some of the you know, the worries that we might have come 2023, like one that you have also uh, pointed to uh, if we don't deal with this issue of vote buying. Uh, yes, um, it's no law is made to be perfect. Law is an instrument of social engineering goes through various changes. It's like a test trial. Then we are amend again to suit the purpose, which is why again one of the reasons why the electoral act was amended in 2022. Uh, there are issues with the electoral act, but the major issue is in the lack of institutions of government, including INEC in this instance, and even Nigerian police force and anti-corruption agencies to implement the law. As it is. So and that way we cannot even begin to find out whether there are witnesses in the areas of the law when the law is not uh, um, uh, applied and, uh, as it should. And so the Electoral Act 2022 is not a bad law, but has it been tested uh, in a sense to make sure that we can, uh, we, can, we can then tweak it if there are issues. So for instance, when you look at the issue of vote buying, Criminalizing vote buying in Nigeria in Section 121 of the Electoral Act is, in reality, is in conformity with our own local realities. We know vote buying is rampant. And to show you the seriousness of this offense, it carries a penalty of 500,000 and a fine, or 12 months in prison and, uh, in lieu of the fine. And the same thing goes on being influenced on election debate. So um, that is 100,000 uh, or a 12 month imprisonment. So the law understands that it's a serious offense and has taken steps. But the law is not enough. It must be enforced. It must be applied. So if these individuals are not investigated, if they are not prosecuted, then there is no law for the judge to pronounce on. No one will go to jail for this. And then people are emboldened to do the wrong thing. A, a, a very good, a very a good part of the electoral act is also, uh, which which is fits in the context of this discussion about not enforcing our laws. Is section 115 of the electoral act about individuals who have been seen to uh, have bought two forms, uh, two nomination forms, which is clearly an infraction under Section 115 of the Electoral Act. Again, this is in the public domain. You would expect INEC to come out uh, to, uh, to investigate and prosecute these individuals. This is not about cancellation of election. It is clearly an electoral offense and it's a crime under the Electoral Act. That, again, is not done. So it is not, uh, it is not about the inefficiencies of the Act but the willingness to apply the law. And it's not only, uh, this is not only applicable to the Electoral Act, it uh, cuts across nearly all laws in Nigeria. And that itself created weaknesses for those laws, and the ultimately the institutions that these laws govern, and it, it is not in the best interest of our democratic practice, not at all. Uh, let me play the devil's advocate a, a little bit here. Um, I hope that I don't get my head cut off. Um, INEC, INEC can give the excuse that they're, they're saddled with so many responsibilities and seem to be a bit wary. Uh, we see this continuous voters registration ongoing. INEC had, had to extend to also go into cleaning of the register so that they can take out double registrations in preparation for 2023. And then they have, they're being dragged in several directions. They have had to conduct Anambra elections um, in November of last year, and then they have done a Shuane Kitty. And of course, they're preparing for, you know, February of 2023. Could that also be a good enough excuse? And maybe that INEC, or could it also be that INEC is overly stretched and they're unable to look at some of these issues, even though there may be departments that are saddled with the responsibility of making sure that these prosecutions happen. I mean, you're making too much sense for a devil's advocate. You're possibly a more an angelic advocate in this instance. Um, I mean, that, that wouldn't stand, really. That would not be a reason at all. I, and you, I don't see INEC putting that reason forward at all. Uh, this time, we say, these are elections that INEC had known are going to come up at least for they had a year's notice for the previous elections. So they knew. And that is why they had gone into the budget and the sanitary allocations for 2022. So they know that they got funding for it. Uh, and they got the government power and the and the logistics to do that is not an excuse at all. Which is one which is from one of the basis of the advocacy we did in court when we filed the case to challenge the discontinuation of the continuous voter registration exercise about the 90 day window that the electoral act had given NINEC between the end of registration and the actual elections. INEC saw this election coming at least four years to prepare. And INEC had not complained about lack of funds, not had them 
but that. So what will be the problem? Again, it might be a sort of institutional failure, which is not uh, usual in Nigeria, or just lack of political will to ensure that um, we have seamless and very effective elections. Really, uh, that they have to conduct another elections, a key election as elections, could not in any way impede the effect of uh, the capacity of INA to conduct free and credible elections in 2023. If at all, this election should be a litmus test to, 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 to work the law, to work the system, so to speak, so that it can see what the challenges are and have enough time. They have more than five months before uh, 2023 elections to fix what could be wrong. So these elections could not be the problem. If you ask me, I think we are part of the solution to the problem. Well, I, I mean, quickly, um, I just want to ask, um, because, you know, we always hear every time we have these elections uh, for Oshun, Ekiti, or Anambra, we always make reference to them every election cycle, that they might, they, they are litmus tests for the main election. And half the time, they're not necessarily, there's not necessarily any change. And, and I'm asking this question because of the people who are very hopeful of what to expect for 2023 and that there might just be some real change come 2023. Uh, and all of these elections as they have happened with all of the allegations that have stuck with them, uh, what's the guarantee that 2023 would be any different? Finally. I think we need to ask I, I make that question. It's very important we pose that uh, question to INEC and to ensure that we step up advocacy to ensure that whatever challenges we can identify now, they are solved. Uh, at least we can see with the Ekiti and Oshun elections, the incidence of ballot snatching appears to be dying off. And then they're unfortunately being replaced by uh, vote buying, which is another problem. So INEC can, uh, can also take steps, and which is why we're doing this advocacy. But what I make the easiest thing they can do is to ensure that individuals who are found culpable face the law, and that way it acts as a very good deterrent uh, to those who might want to try it, and it also strengthens the resolve of INEC. The people see INEC as very determined to ensure that the vote buying and other electoral processes uh, do not happen in 2023. Um, so we talk about this every year, every election cycle about the the litmus test elections, but we still uh, have challenges in 2023, which is what INEC needs to sit up. They saw this coming, they had a lot of time to plan. Really, there's no excuse for okay. INEC to fall short of the expectations of Nigerians. There is really no excuse. None will be tenable or acceptable. All right. Kolawalo Luadare is the Deputy Director of SEREP, and we want to thank you so much for being part of this conversation. And we're look for, looking forward to uh, what comes out of this. Thank you very much, Maria. All right. And that's the show tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being part of the conversation. Tomorrow we're back, 7 p.m., talking for development and bringing you the biggest stories in Nigeria's political space. I am Mary Anacone. Have a good night.